So we're going to talk about computerization. And this is following on from the what is computational design video that we posted a couple of weeks ago. And just to recap, we were discussing two different camps that we're falling into as designers. And the terms that we use were computerization and computation. So we're going to focus a little bit more on computerization and what that means in terms of 3D modeling and parametric modeling using Grasshopper. And so on a basic level, computerization is just elevating everything that we could do outside of a computer, but in a digital system. So imagine an architect at his drawing board, you know, creating his building, creating his design. Whenever you have design changes, these are costly, time consuming, because you have to redo all of your drawings. Computers gave us a, an efficiency in that design process because now we didn't have a drawing board. We had digitized drawing system where we could make any change that we like to our drawings and reprint and create efficiencies in our design processes. Really all we're doing is extending what we could do with a normal drawing board, but in a digital space. And this is the concept of computerization. We also talked about how parametric design extends this, this capability of our computers even further by allowing us to create very complex pieces of design driven by relationships between objects. And this is parametric design. It's still encompassed in computerization because we're still just creating efficient systems. We could use our drawing boards and our digital drawing processes to create complex objects. But by using parametric design, we're more able to control many, many elements simultaneously to create a higher level of complexity. So we're going to discuss and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by this with some examples. So and we're really going to be looking at the difference between, say, 3D modeling and parametric design and what that difference actually means to us as designers. So if I switch over to Rhino, um, we are and Rhino, this could be any 3D software that we're working with. I, I'm using Rhino because I'm always working with Grasshopper. Um, but this is the principle is the same if we're working with SketchUp or any other 3D model, 3D modeling tools that you like. Um, and all I'm going to do is create a sphere. That is that is all I'm going to do. And in, in if we were using a drawing board, I would, um, you know, I'm creating my my plan, my sections and my elevations and my perspective view. I would have to draw each of these individually. So in our digitized, computerized world, I can select my sphere creation tool. I can click and I need a, a few pieces of information. I just want to point these out so I can click a center point. This is the first thing that is going to be asked for. Uh, where is the center of the sphere? And it's going to ask for a radius. Um, so I'm just going to put, uh, let's say, 100 in. Um, I'm going to zoom out on all of my views because it's a bit small. And there we have it. We have a sphere that has been drawn in um, three. Well, we have three different elevations. We have a top view, a front and a back view. Um, and we also have a perspective view of our sphere. And what I want you to note is uh, how quick that was. And, you know, it was fairly it was fairly straightforward. There was a few pieces of information that we needed to define that sphere as a designer. Um, but, you know, and they were the center point and the radius. And that is it. So if we were going to draw this, um, you know, manually using a drawing board, I have three circles to draw and I have, uh, you know, a, a, effectively a circle that's shaded just for my, my perspective view. Um, if we wanted to do that again and we create a different design and this time we're going to make a sphere that is only 50 across. So very, really small. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, we have no scale, so it looks exactly the same, but we'll make it look a little bit smaller. Um, and again, you know, we can we can update that. We can create a new design. Um, if we were using, you know, manual drawing with our, you know, just on a sheet of paper, this would be a little bit more time consuming to do that. All that we're doing is the computer is being used to create efficiencies. This was much quicker to um, to draw as it would be on paper. I can create multiple versions fairly quickly. And I can uh, I can print this in many times and in, in many different ways that I want. Um, I can change the graphics. You know, we have a lot of control. We can speed things up a lot with 3D modeling and this level of computerization. What I want to talk about, though, is um, our next level of this, um, which is parametric design and control and creating even more efficiencies using systems rather than computerized processes like 3D modeling. So I'm going to delete my sphere and we're going to take a look at Grasshopper and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to create a sphere. So we're going to um, look, search for the sphere tool. 
Um, it, it is asking us for two pieces of information, exactly the same as we did with um, our sphere in Rhino. It's asking for the base plane. So where do I want the center point to be? So I'm going to define this with a uh, point. So this is going to be our, um, our world XY, our 0, 0, 0 coordinate. And we're also going to give it a radius of 100. And so you saw how quick that was. We now have a um, we now have a sphere that has been drawn in all of our elevations, um, and we can um, and we can adjust this. And that's the key adjusting because this now is not a static model or a static drawing. It is a live piece of uh, coding. So whenever we want to make changes, we can just come through to our script and we can introduce new parameters. I can change my sphere to be 100. I can uh, change my sphere to be 1,100. Whatever, whatever it is, we can adjust our values um, based on um, number systems very much more easily and quicker than we could by manually redrawing it. Those, those levels have just gotten you know, quicker, and our computer is a, being able to speed up our processes on, with this very, very simple project at each level. Um, so 3D modeling sp sped up our manual drawing processes and parametric design is speeding up our 3D modeling processes. Because within here, I could put a, you know, we can add number sliders. So I could, um, I could change the position of where this is very accurately. I can change the, um, I can change the size of this, um, like we said, very easily. All based on just those very simple um, pieces of information that were asked for. And so the... This system, say, of our sphere creation system, took about the same amount of time to create than than our um, than our sphere in Rhino. But now we have infinite variation. It's going to save us time every single one time we want to make a design change. So this, I think, is very you know at this level, it's not that impressive because we are we're just creating a sphere and we could just do all that in Rhino. You know, you might be saying, "What is the, you know, what is the point of all that?" So let's let's go a little bit further and and say start saving ourselves even more time. And now we're going to create multiple spheres. Um, so we'll first do this in um, in Rhino, and we can and we can see how long this takes. So I'm going to I'll just go back. So I've got my sphere again, and we're going to create an array. So um. Actually, no, I'm going to go from the beginning. So we're going to create our sphere uh, all the way from the beginning. Um, so we're going to grab our sphere tool. Uh, we are going to grab, we're going to put it at the zero, zero point. We are going to have it be 50 uh, millimeters uh, radius. We're going to select that object. We are going to select the array tool. And we're going to make a grid of these. We want five in the X, five in the Y. Um, one in the Z, and we are going to make them in a hundred by a hundred grid, so they don't touch like this. So that was quite a lot of effort, but we've just made a little grid of a little grid of spheres, and we get the um, we get the elevations, the plan, the three dimensional view, very nice. Um, but that took I don't know thirty seconds, forty seconds. Um, and if I ever want to make a design change, if I ever want to change the size of the radius. I basically have to do that entire process again. So the point of uh, parametric design is to be able to speed this up. We have our sphere. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've created our point, created our sphere. Um, so now we're going to um, now we're going to create a grid of these, much like an array. There are array tools. Um, there's there's many many different ways to achieve this. Um, but the, what I would do is uh, we're going to create a series um, that is um, we have. A step size for each number. We want uh, only five in the X and five in the Y. We're going to graph one of these and we're going to create our um, grid of points, our grid of spheres. Uh, the problem is that our radius needs to match our, um, the, the radius of the sphere needs to be half of whatever our grid setting out is. So we could just put a bit of a number in here. And we can go x divided by 2, x divided by 2, and we can create um, our grid again. So this is exactly the same as what I just did in Rhino, but using Grasshopper and systema systematizing that exact process and those exact steps that we, that we went through. And but now the difference is I have full control over this. I can change the radius. I can change how many um, tiles that we have. I can increase this to ten. 
Um, and all, automatically, I have multiple design options, multiple versions of this that are that are possible. And um, every time a design change comes around, I can simply update my script. I can update um, my script in here. The point of this still being computerization is that all of this is entirely possible by using 3D modeling or by hand drawing. Entirely possible. It just takes longer. And so computational, uh, sorry, Parametric design speeds up our work by systematizing what we can already do and using the power of the computer to hold those relationships for us. We only need to do this once. We don't need to do it over and over again. And this becomes even more uh, apparent when we start to do the slightly more complicated things. So let's set up a uh, distance rule from uh, all of our points to a normal, uh, a local point, so an X, Y, Z. Um, so we're creating a relationship now between where all of our points are, where all of our spheres are, and to a, a, a common point. Um, and we're going to create a radius value based on that. This is going to look weird because the, the numbers are too big. Uh, so we're going to divide that number by a certain factor. This is what is known as an attractor and essentially the basis of all parametric design. And now every single sphere has a different radius depending on how far it is away from our zero zero point. So every single sphere has a, uh, sorry, every single sphere has a different radius. So imagine even doing something as simple as this using traditional, even 3D modeling techniques, this would, we would need to come through to every single uh, point location and create a sphere, the corresponding size that it needs to be um, based, on, based on the distance that it is away from the, uh, the center point. So I'd have to do this for every single sphere. It's not that it's impossible. Of course, you, you, that would be possible to do, but it's just going to take a while. And if that point ever moves and we, uh, we somehow um, get to a, we, you know, we want to do a different design. Um, so we'll put 500 in instead and move that point around. Then I have a different um, piece of design. You know, I, th this whole system is updatable based on its input parameters. Whereas if I had to remodel the entire, the entirety of this again, and there's only, um, you know, there's a hundred spheres, so I don't know, it could take 10 minutes. But if we have to do that for every single design change, that really adds up. And, you know, another level deep of, um, you know, if we had to do this by hand, this is even more time consuming. So this is just building up from everything that we can do on a drawing board to 3D modeling, CAD drawing, to parametric design. This is the computerization of our work to create more and more efficiencies in our drawing and modeling. And the way that is achieved is through systemization. We are systemizing our processes so that we can digitize them and create those efficiencies. So understanding this grasshopper script is really just about understanding the, the process that we want to be able to go through to create that and breaking that down into a series of steps. Uh, we first create some points, then we create some relationships, and then we create our geometrical operation with it. That is the sequence of steps that we need to be able to go through to be able to create that as an efficient grasshopper script. And this is a very simple example, which is just a few spheres being controlled by a relationship to a common point, uh, a simple attractor script. But this can get more complex very, very quickly and give us the ability as designers to create things that were nearly impossible before. Not completely impossible, they would just be very time consuming, as I've said, but it's nearly so time consuming that they would be impossible. So for instance, I've, I have a script here, which is for a complex diagrid uh, roof. And this is a, um, a network of interconnecting lines, all based on a three dimensional surface. And we have full control over this. Imagine trying to draw this by hand in Grasshopper. Imagine trying to draw this by hand on a sheet of paper. This would, it's completely possible, but it would take a very long time. And if we ever wanted to change how many divisions that we had, we would have to do that entire process again. What parametric design allows us to do is to digitize those processes. It allows us to have full control over um, our geometry of how this paneling works, allowing us to create projects that were nearly impossible before. 
Not completely impossible, as I've said, but so difficult that it would be nearly impossible or so time consuming. And with these processes, we can create multiple versions, multiple options. We can ideate within our system to create very creative and very fluid design processes. So this is the point of computerization. This is using our computers to extend what we can already do as designers on a sheet of paper. This is how you should imagine it. And all the time, these are just higher levels of efficiency that are occurring. 3D modeling and CAD are going to be far quicker to use than a normal drawing board or physical drawing processes. And parametric design is far quicker than 3D modeling and 2D CAD as we're creating the relationships between objects. We're systemizing our designs and our processes. And for most designers, this is what we use our computers for. We, are, we use computerization to extend what we do. The next term that we will discuss in the next video is computation, using our computers to design things that would be completely impossible before. It's not a case of just creating efficiencies. It's actually a case of creating processes that we would not be able to do without a computer. It's not a set of direct relationships as in parametric design. It's about finding relationships that we didn't even know existed. The computer being used in tandem with us as, as a designer. So this is computational design, which is what we'll talk about in the next video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I think it's a really good idea to get a solid grounding of some of these terms that you'll hear, but also just understanding our tools and processes a little bit more and how we interact with them as designers. Parametric and computational design is all about designing your tools that you work with and your workflows that you work with every single day. So part of that is understanding the relationships that we have with our computers, with our software and how we interact with them as a designer. So next time we're going to delve into computational design proper and discuss some tools and some aspects of computational design that you can take and use in your work. So thanks for watching again, guys, and I'll see you on the next session.